I am Dr. Abhay Mahajan. I am practicing urologist in the city of Aurangabad, Maharashtra. I am practicing in Aurangabad since last 20 years exclusively in the field of urology. My medical education is from Nair Hospital. I have done my MBBS, MS General Surgery, MCG Urology, DNB Urology and MNMS from Nair Hospital, Mumbai. Today I am going to give you some information about renal stones. Renal stones is a very common condition in India and especially in states where the climate is very hot. Usually it is seen in Maharashtra, Rajasthan, some areas of Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and also in southern India. Kidney stones is very commonly formed because of dry and hot climate where the patient have reduced water intake and some patients are prone for stone formation. Stones are usually formed between the age of 20 and 40 years. It is usually seen more common in men than in women. And stones are also seen in children, especially because of malnutrition. Kidney stones are also found in older age patients, but the incidence is quite low. The exact cause for formation of kidney stone is not known but there is supersaturation or more accumulation of certain crystals like calcium, oxalate, uric acid and cysteine crystals in the urine which subsequently lead to stone formation. Once the stone is formed, it is usually formed as a very small particle of 4 to 5 millimeters. Then multiple such small particles are formed, they come together and slowly the stone size increases. The patient usually presents with pain in the flanks, either in the right or the left, depending upon the location of the stone. The stone, as it grows in size, it obstructs the urinary tract and there is swelling in the kidneys. This swelling in medical terminology is usually known as hydronephrosis. The pain in the initial stages is dull aching, that is it is in very mild form. But as the tract, urinary tract gets obstructed because of the stone, the pain increases. Sometimes the pain is very severe, colicky, which is associated with nausea, vomiting and the patient literally rolls on the floor because of pain. Such acute pain usually subsides with tablets and injections but subsequently the treatment of stone is required so that the patient doesn't get further episodes of pain. Associated with pain the symptoms like burning micturation, maturia that is blood in urine or in late conditions with infection setting in patient can present with severe pain in the flank, a fever and turbid urine or person urine. When these patients present with symptoms of kidney stone, the treatment is usually mandatory when the stone size is large and before we plan for any treatment, investigations are to be done. Ultrasonography is an important investigation which can lead to diagnosis of stone. Ultrasound can be done for the symptoms of the patient or usually the patients even if the stones are very large, they are asymptomatic, that is there are no symptoms. Uh, because the stone is not causing any obstruction or it is not causing uh, swelling in the kidney and whenever such asymptomatic stones are detected on ultrasound the patient is amazed or surprised that the stone size is so large and it is not giving any symptoms to the patient but if it is a large stone it definitely requires treatment if it is a small stone then we can remove it with medical management or we can observe the next investigation after ultrasound is to do an intravenous pyrography or to do a CT scan if available, CT scan is the best modality because it also tells the hardness of the stone and depending on we doctors usually decide what treatment is to be offered to the patients of kidney stone disease. The treatment of kidney stone depends on the size of the stone. If the stones are less than 5 mm, usually they don't require any treatment. Conservative treatment is offered like plenty of fluids, diet control and observation. Stones between 5 mm to 10 mm can come out through the urinary tract by medical management. Certain drugs are given which can flush out the stones from the ureter outside the urinary tract. When the stone size exceeds about 8 to 10 mm, then it definitely requires some treatment. 
for treating kidney stones usually there are three modalities or three types of treatment options which are available one is ESWL or extra corporal shock wave lithotripsy second is flexible ureteroscopy also known as RIRS with laser lithotripsy and third is PCNL or percutaneous nephrolithotomy Coming to extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy, that is ESWL, which was very commonly done few years back. But uh, this treatment option has limitations of stone size. If the stones are more than 1.5 cm, usually ESWL is not preferred. It is a modality where the shock waves are delivered by the machine from outside and the shock waves are targeted on the stone. It is a daycare treatment which gets over in about one and a half to two hours time. The patient is uh, given minimal anesthesia and discharge on same day. For ESWL and the effectivity and the result depend, depends upon the type of the machine which is used to break the stone. I told you the stone size is limited for ESWL. Only smaller stones can be treated by ESWL. Large stones usually they don't get fragmented by ESWL machine. Multiple settings are required. These stones can get obstructed into the lower urinary tract and again some endoscopic removal uh, usually is required uh, for small fragments to be re removed from the urethra or from the urinary tract. So the second modality for large stones that is more than 1 cm or 1.5 cm of stone is to offer a flexible urethroscopy. Flexible urethroscopy is the latest modality where the scope goes from the urethra in the bladder and then from through the ureter it enters the kidney where the stone is present. The advantage of flexible ureteroscopy is it is completely an endoscopic procedure where there is no hole in the kidney or there is no incision on the skin of the patient. The flexible ureteroscope reaches the stone in any corner of the kidney and the stone is then fragmented with the help of a laser machine. Holmium laser or the latest available thulium fiber laser is used to fragment the stone and these fragments are then uh, removed by a basket endoscopically or if it is completely uh, powdered into very small fragments all this stone dust then gets removed through the urinary tract. The third modality of stone removal is PCNL or percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Now PCNL is a, a very good modality for almost all types of stones, whether they are hard stones, small stones and even stones more than 2 or 2.5 cm can be easily treated by PCNL. So majority of the stones at present are treated by, by this modality of PCNL where a small hole or a track is made from the skin from the backside of the patient where this track goes in the kidney, the track is dilated and then a nephroscope is passed in the kidney. Stone is then visualized and broken by various energy sources or by laser and all the fragments are then removed immediately in the same sitting outside the uh, kidney and outside the body. The advantage of this procedure is usually it is a single sitting procedure where most of the uh, kidney stones are removed uh, but the disadvantage are that it requires general anesthesia, it is a major procedure and requires 2-3 to three days admission. Nowadays in PCNL, the latest modality is availability of smaller scopes which is known as mini PCNL or mini per. The size of the nephroscope in mini PCNL is very small, hence the tract made in the kidney is a very small tract and this small tract the endoscope goes and stone fragments are then fragmented with either holmium laser or with the latest available technology of thulium fiber laser. And the latest thulium fiber laser is an excellent modality for stone fragmentation. All stones get completely dusted with thulium fiber. So the overall stone free rate is very high and accessory procedures of removal of the stone is rarely required. The most commonest question which is asked by the patient is after the stone removal to prevent recurrence. Yes, a patient has to take proper care to avoid recurrence of kidney stones. Patient has to drink a lot of water after the surgery and throughout his life to prevent stone formation. Depending upon what type of stone the patient has, a certain diet is advised to the patient. Usually low fiber diet is preferred, high fiber diet and diet containing more of oxalate, calcium, uric acid is avoided. 
uh, the common dietary restrictions are to avoid red meat in total, to avoid uh, spinach, tomatoes and certain dietary uh, substances like chocolates, cold drinks, coffee, excess salt intake is avoided. All these uh, dietary substances which contains a lot of oxalate, calcium and uric acid. If the patient follows the diet strictly and if the patient drinks a lot of water, the chances of stone recurrence or stone formation again substantially reduces and patient can be stone free for a longer period of time.